Hello Slammers, this is Coach Dustin here. This is a bit of a post-game from Saturday slash pre-session uh, check-in with you guys. I think the one of the most, you know, performance or uh, games on the weekend, they're kind of like our performance, right? We're kind of in practice sessions during the week are to help prepare for those performances. So, uh, based on a performance on the weekend, Coach Kevin and I talk about it and we look at what was working, what wasn't, what we need to do better. And then we kind of develop uh, games or practice sessions that will help us as a team and as individuals uh, get better at the areas where we may have been weak. And so, while I know it's not fun to lose, um, losing is also the best opportunity for you as players and for us as coaches to find out where our weak spots are. So be grateful and gracious uh, when and when you lose and kind of be like, okay, cool. I learned I, there's some things I need to work on and I can get better. And you guys should all hopefully be in the mindset is I want to get better as a soccer player. If I'm always playing against easy competition, you don't get better that way, right? You can't improve very much. So um, don't let it discourage you. We played a really tough team. Um, I'm going to guess probably one of the toughest teams in our division for the spring. They had ta they went to the semi uh, semifinals state cup this year, and the team that beat them went on to take and win state cup. So that was uh, that was some of the best competition in the flight uh, three of last year, and they're going to be a flight two. Uh, possibly flight one team this year. We'll see. doesn't matter uh, because we are where we are and we want to get better and be able to beat them. Uh, we might get another chance to play them this season, whether it's uh, in a tournament or at the end of the season. So let's talk about what worked well and what we need to work and improve on so that we can focus on those things this week and we understand why we're doing the drills or the different practice things that we're doing. First thing I want to talk about is, uh, you'll see here I have a setup for a goal kick, and we're kind of doing, um, assuming this is kicking out from the left side, so we're going to build out the back. One thing we actually did pretty well this last game was we broke their first line of attack. So the first line of attack essentially is like their 9 and their 10 player, right? Uh, maybe their 8 as well. So you have these four, these three players here. We kind of assume, especially that 9, right? So in any sort of goal kick, what you'll see is sort of a pairing up of certain players. The wingers, our winger and their winger is being marked. Our winger is being marked by their winger on this side. We also have um, their holding midfielder, perhaps their six is against our eight. They have an eight against an eight. Um, here, one of their center backs is probably against our four center mid. Um, we have, but they're using their three backs generally as a way to hold the line, right? They, they've moved their line up to the midfield. Now, the reason why they do this and why we do this is because there's no offsides for them on this side of the center line. The offsides trap can't be set until you cross the center line. So once you're in this area, you can set an offsides trap. Up in here, you can't. So to play this, to press this high while it can be done, you could be in a dangerous situation because it's easier for them to play behind you. You can have your striker playing right here on, the, on that side of them. So they're here mostly protecting and trying to keep the ball in this half of the field. Now, so if I were to show you, for example, what I'm talking about in terms of the, uh, the defending third. So here's the defending third area. Let me just hide the type. So getting out of this area, we actually did pretty well. Um, there was a few mistakes we made. There's one thing I really, we really wanted to point out, and that's for our backs. When we are playing out the back, we need both backs to uh, start back here. A couple of times our backs were cheating up way too far, and that actually is sort of, if you think about it, that's right where we want our 11 player to check into, into that space. So if, uh, if our back is playing here, we're basically using the same lane for two players and we're not maximizing our, our chances. So we want our backs to be here Now they could be inside the box. There's a lot of space here, right? We don't need to be going that far out into the corner. We could just be playing it right to here. And now once our left back has the ball, that's going to force a decision, right? Um, that means that this either nine is going to start chasing this way, right? And then uh, all these other players start to converge generally on on where the ball is being passed to so we need uh that's step number one. that's that's the one of the definite things we need to correct is that our backs both left side and right side whether it's being out the back on the left or we're playing to the right side you need to be back even with 
uh, Bailey or our a sweeper who is taking the ball. Um, Bailey, you did a great job uh, sometimes dribbling forward and then sometimes passing. So that all depended mainly on what opportunities were available and whether or not they were pressing you. So we have Ava touch that ball a little bit forward. That way um, our sweeper, so Bailey, was just dribbling and waiting to see what happens. So if the nine decides to press, right, then that means we have definitely more space and opportunities opening up in other places. Um, when the nine press is here, and if our three is out here, this seven is basically having to guard two people. So is this defender going to cheat in and try to steal the ball from, try to take this pass away? Are they going to take the pass away from our winger? So if this person cheated in here, then Bailey has a free lane to our um, to our winger. If if they stay marked, then the ball goes out wide to here, which then this player has a lot of good space to dribble. So what we want, um, and this is something we're going to be focusing on a lot, is if you have space, we want you to dribble the ball forward to make the opponent move. All right. If you have the ball here on the left back and you don't uh, move the ball, no one comes to you, you really don't have any passing lanes, right? Everybody is now being marked. And it's easy for them to do that. It's when one of these players decides to crash in that you can then make a move and make your pass out here. And now we've broken through that first line of defense. We did this relatively well in the game. We didn't really have a lot of struggles. There was a few mistakes here and there, but for the most part, we were pretty pleased with this. So congratulations, but let's just really focus on our backs when we're kicking out the back on those goal kicks. We need you back um, here in this space, okay? You're basically, otherwise you're just taking away the space that our our wingers need to check into into here okay cool next thing where we really struggled in this last game was our middle third so that's basically the middle of the field here let me hide the tight mesh for a second here we don't need that getting the ball through this section and into a matter of fact i could even say just getting it past the midline right so this sort of area, if I were to shift it over, this is really where we struggled. And, I, and there's a good reason why we struggled. And then we have some good ways to how to solve this. Um, let me hide our defenders for a second so we can take a look at just our, our own positioning and where we are. Okay. As you see here, a lot, and this happened many times in this game, right? We are always able to get the ball like more than 70, 80% of the time to our winger out in the wings, right? So once the winger has the ball, let's just say they hit it with their forward foot and now they're facing forward, you'll notice a problem. All of their options are towards the middle of the field, right? Even if eight comes forward here and everyone pushes, pushes forward like this, every pass is now either here or having to play back to the middle or back here. We have no options in this space, yet that's the space that has the most open. That's the one they're going to give us. They're going to give us this space, right? Because they're trying to, they're most concerned about protecting their goal area. So here's what we want to have happen. We have two eights in this positioning, right? Because we're playing with um, our holding mid is sort of playing like the central sweeper type position, right? This is Eileen. So Eileen is kind of holding the ground in a lot of this area here, right? So that really allows our eight players to spring forward. So if we're attacking the left side of the field, um, we could have a eight spring forward into this space. Now this, remember, everything is under the condition of what's happening on the field, right? So let's just say uh, Elise over here on the left wing or something decides she makes a break for the sideline because they're giving her the space, right? So she makes a space here. Now, does that mean that eight should um, not, not go here? Yeah, that would kind of be a, a difficult area for this player to go, wouldn't it? Because now that they're going to end up running into each other. So then you might try to occupy a space here um, and run forward and allow these players to come back, right? Um, if she actually makes her way this far, then the eight would sort of play on the inside. And so what we call this is an underlap, right? An overlap would be if 11 comes to the middle and the eight overlaps on the outside this way. But if 11's out here, okay, then on the wing, then the eight can run in this way and grab the ball, and now they're coming out this way. So that's more of an underlap uh, type of maneuver. 
So I, we need both our left and right midfielders to always be thinking of what's their next move. Do they want to spring forward and uh, be an option out this way? Or do they want to position themselves more inside and then maybe even do an overlap, right? So if 11 had the ball, right, and that would be like Addy or <clears throat> Elise or somebody, and they decide, hey, they're giving me space, I'm gonna move in here because that's where they're allowing them to give the space. Now I need you to overlap on this side so that you can get the ball this way. So the next play, the best option for us a lot of the times is gonna be that, that left or right midfielder. And in our game, our midfield really didn't really move out of into those spaces. Our midfield liked to stay central in terms of the middle alley and through here. And we need to start kind of breaking our habit of that. One of the habits we've, and this is because this is how you're coached, right? Check into space, check into the, check in to receive a pass. Well, what happened a lot was, let's say Eileen had the ball and eight decided, oh, I'm gonna check in. And this, I'm gonna check in too. And 10's like, oh, I'm gonna check. Well, now what we've done is we've brought all of the defenders with us because we've all checked into space, uh, into the ball. So instead of checking into the player with the ball, start thinking about the spaces that you could check into. Like maybe the space actually is more over here or up in here. Maybe this 10 decides to go here and this eight falls back, right? So now you have some forward options, but you've also spread out their defenders, right? And it, hey, if all these defenders decide to attack Eileen and we have all our midfielders out in this position over here, that's okay. Eileen's just gonna put a ball high over their heads and it's gonna land in here and now all of their defenders are caught out of position. I'm okay with that. Make sure you get into that space. If you're, um, we have this problem of always bringing, uh, having a, a, an opponent attached to our midfielders and we want to start making those uh, our opponent have to choose. Are you going to follow me or are you going to stay where the ball goes? If I run away from the ball, can I get that person to follow me? If I do, if I get a defender to follow me out this way, I've just made Eileen's job a lot easier. So we really need to support our players, not by checking closer to them, but checking into a space that creates more space around them right? Think about opening space around your players as a way to support them as a, as opposed to, oh, I'm going to get closer to them, right? Getting closer to them usually um, a, lo a lot of cases works against us. Now, it doesn't mean we don't ever do that. And I think um, sometimes it's not necessarily closer. It's more just falling back, right? So if Eileen had the ball now, she's trapped because she's got some defenders around her. Um, let's just pull, turn these on, right? Oops. Let's say Eileen was trapped here, all right, and that and that eight was pinning this player, and she doesn't really have a place to play. This eight might drop back, this left midfielder, so that she can pass to here, okay? Now this eight's gonna check in. Eileen, you might just be running right here to receive the bounce pass back, and now you can play forward. So that's how we're gonna start to use each other um, by not necessarily getting closer to the person with the ball, but getting into a space that opens up space around the person with the ball. Does that make sense? Good. I heard you say yes, that makes perfect sense. Great. Okay, so let's just kind of also briefly touch on the positioning of all of our players um, for a, an attacking right side or attacking left side. So let's, this is pretty neutral right now, right? Everybody is, let's say we're attacking right side this time. So we're gonna be building out the back from here all right, <clears throat> pretty evenly spaced for the most part. Okay, cool. So if we're gonna build out from the right side, that means that uh, Bailey's gonna move the ball and she has either options to our six, to our seven, or to our two, right? So either to Eileen, over out here, this would probably be Addie, and over here, Carly um, uh, was playing this on the game. So that would be our three options, right? Um, eight would also be a potential option. <clears throat> now, when you guys are set up, you are almost always going to have the opponent in front of you trying to mark you, right? We all know how this works. Um, so we have to try to shake those opponents and kind of get them off our back. That's why it's so important for, uh, for this play to work that Addy 
for example, would be as far to the side and out wide. She might get so far out here that this person would start to come this way. Well, this is great because now Addie's in her blind spot, right? So now Addie can quickly make a run into this space here and we can receive a pass. This person now is coming, oh my gosh, I'm caught out of position and Addie's able to maybe move out the side and look, our eight has already moved over into that position. So if we're building out the right, let's just say, um, let's see, even simplify this just a bit more. So let's go, all right, we played out here because our right back is unguarded. And now that's gonna force the 10 to likely start to chase, right? Or their nine rather. So now their nine, who's their striker is like, oh, I'm running this way. Now I'm running this way to try and attack that. So she's gonna start maybe feeling pressure. Um, this 11, <laughs> if, if uh, Addy now, his job is to get a passing lane to here. And most likely Addy could f to maybe make a run in and then out wide again and lose this defender here. So now we've got the ball to Addy. So we had a lot of situations like this with our winger having the ball on the right side and now we didn't have anywhere to go with it. So we were kind of all watching like, oh, is she gonna be able to beat this one on one v one situation? Is she gonna take it down the line? If she does, now she has to try to make a pass. And there was a few passes where we were able to get from the wing to our striker. It had to be high in the air to get over people's heads and landed in just the right spot. It's an option. I like that we did that. I like that we have that as an option, but it's not, it's sort of um, catching them. You, you can catch them once or twice with that, but after a while they kind of get onto it. And now it's like, okay, we, we know what their move is. So what happens? So if our seven is here, let's just make this uh, general rule. We want eight to move into a more attacking space here. All right, now that's likely gonna bring our six with them. All right, and that's okay. Um, I want Eileen to now shuffle over here and be an option for if Addy were to get into trouble, she can pass a more sideways pass here to, to Eileen. So Eileen could, we could play, play back to the middle, right? By this point, the nine sort of probably wandering around trying to decide if they're gonna try to chase or maybe recover because they're tired. So we have these options, right? These are always the, the playback, switch the field type options. Um, <clears throat> Eileen is definitely, a, if Eileen, if you got the ball here, your most likely play is to then try to switch the field over to the 11. Okay, so here Addy has the ball. I want the 10 to <clears throat> fill into this space here, okay? And I want our other eight to stay wide. Too often our other eight came in here and look what happens. If we do this, if everybody kind of checks into this side of the field, we've brought almost all their defending. Now this, so this, this player right here is like, well, why am I guarding this person? They're never gonna get a ball to their winger from there. So now they're closing in on this space. This is why we failed in our last game look how many people we were trying to battle because we kind of kept bringing them all with us. Let's, let's, um, as a matter of fact, this player wasn't even here. So we had this happening, right? Even if we were trying to stay, uh, that's just not a good place to be. Do we want the, that's, that's a dangerous position because look how close they are to our penalty box. Um, we're trying to play, it's very congested. So what we want instead is this to happen here. We want the 10 to come in in a more advanced but central position. We want our eight to stay in a more neutral uh, uh, and a left of center position, okay? So neutral means here, you're even with the ball, okay? Uh, forward means you're forward from the ball, all right? And then here we have an eight available there. And now we also have the, the nine constantly being able to even shift over here or stay more central. Um, in this case, I'd stay more central because we don't want too much attention going over to our our, our winger or our uh, right midfielder who's kind of sprung over here. All right, now they have our 11s over here. So this, this, this keeps, this sort of spacing now allows us to move the ball through these spaces much easier, right? Um, now when, if 10 checks in and gets the ball, right, they've only got one person here on their back and they can make, easily make a pass forward through here and the eight picks it up on the other side. Um, likewise, if Addy were to now play the ball up to the eight, then Addy makes a run into this space and the eight can just bounce pass it back to Addy who now has a, a channel to run through here. Or maybe Addy immediately now plays it back to the center in front of our striker. So you can see how just by bringing our right midfielder over to the wing, 
our left, our uh, center midfielder stays a little bit more central but forward, and our left midfielder stays on this side of the, of the midfield, right? Staying over here, we've created a lot more space for our players. And if all of these blue players decide to just cheat and get in here, please buy, be my guest because now Addy's just gonna chuck, the, is just gonna get a nice looper ball into this space. And now we've got all of our attackers here against their three. So we have at least a, probably like a 3v2 type of situation. All right, I love that. So let's kind of just uh, go back to, uh, let's just kind of leave it there in terms of tactics and how, like where, where we got stuck in this last game, which is in this midfield area and trying to get across the, set in the midline, trying to get into uh, our attacking third area. And the concepts that we're going to be working on in practice are going to be both moving, dribbling with the ball in order to move a defender, um, and then not checking into the player, checking into space. Meaning, I'm going to go find space to move into to give to. So I'm going to support the person with the ball by creating more space for them by moving around and, and trying to also stretch the defense. Right. Go find those areas where there's not a defender and go run over there and um, give your uh, give your teammate an option to put the ball into those spaces for you. So I think, and then just an overall tactical for those three midfielders because we have two eights, right? We have our right midfielder here, we have our left midfielder, and we have our center midfielder. Let me just hide these, okay? <clears throat> if we're attacking on the right side of the field, this person springs forward and then we have this sort of like look at this nice sort of line here you can kind of think of a bit of a diagonal line like this if we're attacking on this side now this eight springs forward our, our central midfielder is here and our eight is back here okay so now if the winger has the ball right they can either um, play forward they can play across to our 10 or they can play it over to our eight and our six would be a now here, right? So we're kind of maintaining these sort of diamond and triangle shapes as we move through the field. Makes sense? So I hope that helps um, our left and right midfielders and our center midfielders understand your positioning. I hope the wingers now understand, stay near those touch lines and look for those options that your option with the ball is either to try to beat the, try to beat the 1v1 down the side or is to dribble the ball to the middle so that then that creates space to move out here. And then once you've done that winger, don't stop. Don't watch the play. Now keep running as a follow-up, either follow through. If this person decides to take the dribble the ball in, you now do an overlap into this space. So you're kind of doing a lot of underlapping and overlapping with your right or center uh, midfield, your left or right midfielders. So you really want those right and left midfielders to interact more with the wingers and sort of do some one twos, um, give each other options. If, look, if nothing else, just go move into space to give your winger more more space to work with, or vice versa, right? You don't are not always going to get the ball by making that run, but you're going to uh, support and give your player a better opportunity, a better chance um, by moving into that space. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks for everything. See you in practice. Work hard, study hard, and win.